Do you like eating strawberries? I certainly do. That's why I especially enjoyed preparing for today's topic. But before we look at the strawberry under the microscope, here are a few interesting facts about it. According to archaeological findings, the strawberry has been eaten by people since the Stone Age. However, only very small quantities were consumed at that time. The forerunner of our modern strawberry, the wild strawberry, was also much smaller and less aromatic. Then, in the 17th and 18th centuries, the North American strawberry or Virginia strawberry and the Chilean strawberry made their way to Europe. Especially the Chilean strawberry has a striking feature. It is known for its particularly large berries. Only a short time later, these two species were then crossed with each other in France, more or less by accident. And the result from this crossing was the base for our modern strawberry, Fragaria ananessa, also called garden strawberry. Nowadays, the cultivation of strawberries has a high economic value. In 2020, a total of 8.8 .8 million tons of strawberries were harvested worldwide. In that same year, the per capita consumption of fresh strawberries in the US was 8.5 pounds. This means that the consumption has almost doubled in the last 20 years. I must admit, my per capita consumption this year will definitely be higher, even more so after making this video. But now, let's dive into the micro world of a strawberry. Here you can see the outer skin of the strawberry. It is also called epidermis or exocarp. The red and delicious part just under the skin is called cortex. This slightly transparent tissue is responsible for the distinctive taste of strawberries. What looks to me a bit like a polished ruby are the cells of the cortex filled to the brim with red juice. Some of you may have noticed those little white translucent hairs on strawberries. They can be seen all over the surface and are sometimes mistaken for mold. These hairs are called trichomes. They are absolutely harmless and you can eat them without hesitation. These small yellow bits here make the strawberry unmistakable. Their botanical name is Echines and now I have a fun fact for you. Most people think that these yellow bits are the seeds of strawberries. But in fact, they are the actual fruits and inside each Echine is the actual seed. Therefore, the strawberry is actually not a berry at all, but a so-called aggregate accessory fruit or to put it more simply, a fails fruit. A medium-sized strawberry has about 200 of these echines. Theoretically, you can easily achieve the goal of 5 servings of fruit per day with just one strawberry. Here you can see the cells together with the hairs even better. These large and thin wall cells are known as parenchyma cells. They have multiple functions and one of them is food storage, for example, which is why they are also called storage cells. The cell sap gets its beautiful reddish color from the pigment anthocyanin, which is also present in many other red fruits. Since studies indicate that it is very healthy for us, you should regularly eat fruits and vegetables that are rich in anthocyanin. 
But the cells of the strawberry contain even more extremely healthy ingredients. They are rich in vitamin C. To be exact, they contain even more vitamin C than oranges or lemons. They also provide B vitamins such as folate, which is very important, especially for pregnant women. Minerals such as manganese, iron and potassium are also stored in it. Mainly the cells are filled with water and this is what makes the strawberry so juicy. Overall, a strawberry consists of 90% water, which makes it a pretty healthy snack. Well, we don't usually eat that part of a strawberry. This is one of those small green leaves that together form a kind of crown on top of the strawberry. This crown is also called calyx in botany. And here again we can see all these little hairs on the surface, which we could also spot before on the skin of the strawberry. The cells of the leaves are filled with the green pigment chlorophyll, which has a crucial part in the process of photosynthesis. That we remove the leaves from the strawberries before we eat them is unnecessary, because they are eatable and actually quite healthy. They are rich in antioxidants and may have antimicrobial properties. But I'll be honest with you, so far I have also always removed them before eating strawberries. Now let's take a look at the inside of a strawberry. This whitish tissue in the middle that you can see here is called the pith. It is almost tasteless for us but contains many essential nutrients which the seeds need for their development. The white threads run directly to the surface of the strawberry and end at the small yellowish bits, the akines, the actual fruits of strawberries. Here you can see the attachment even better. These white lines function like veins that supply water and minerals to the seeds which are located inside the akines. By the way, these connections with the pith, the white threads and the akines are called vascular bundles. The tissue of these veins belongs to the so-called transport tissue. Here you can see how its structure is clearly different from the surrounding tissue. I found it really fascinating how complex but also how beautifully constructed the inside of a strawberry is. Did you also get a craving for strawberries after this episode like I did? Maybe there is a strawberry field near you where you can pick them yourself. In my opinion, fresh and self-picked strawberries taste much better than the store-bought ones. I, for one, will definitely be eating some more after I finish this video. And who knows, today I might be brave enough and eat the green leaves too. If you enjoyed today's episode, feel free to subscribe to my channel, so you can join me again for the next microscopic adventure. You can also find me on Instagram. If you want to follow me there, you can click on the link in the description. Thank you and until next time!